All right. Just finally, can you each list one piece of advice specific to your e-commerce model that you would give someone trying to create a startup today in daily deals, online retail, flash sales? For daily deals? You for daily deals, yes. It's too one, late. One piece of advice. It's too late. Don't come in. <laughs> no, seriously. Someone... <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. Don't come in. Same question. Yes, um, don't underestimate the complexity and the importance of superior logistics. It's very easy to get top line volume and demand. That's the easiest part of the job. We can all do it. What's not easy is fulfilling that demand and getting the consumer to trust you, to like you, and come back to buy more. And at the end of the day, bottom line, to make money. So if you're getting huge top lines and you're bleeding money on the bottom line for years and years, it's not a viable option. So come in understanding that you need to get it right on the top level and on the bottom level. Advice. Um, don't buy from Trendyong. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, again, I, I'll go back to the same exact advice that I had in the beginning, uh, which, which is to choose the right investors. Unfortunately, a lot of the entrepreneurs here, and, and by the way, I host uh, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs at my company on a weekly basis. I get two to three entrepreneurs coming into my office, just pitching their idea to me getting feedback. I'm not some sort of spiritual leader on this movement of e-commerce in the Middle East, but I can tell you one thing. If you have the wrong investor, day one, you will not build a company, you will not build a business. You will build whatever that the investor envisioned in his mind for your business. So choose the right investor. Okay, before questions, uh, I sent a tweet off and everyone actually seemed to like it. Uh, who wants to see a face-off between the panelists? Okay, so this is my suggestion. You can sign, sign in or you can sign out. I would suggest we start with each of you. You share just one number, and everyone has to share that number that you shared. And then we move. You can pick your best number or your worst number. But you share, for example, your users. We share whatever it is. Return customers. Whatever you want, you share and we share. And we do it a few, a few rounds until it gets messy. Sign in, everyone, or out. Fight. Okay, I, I'm going to start off easy. We're 19 months old. <laughs> okay, so he, he said his age, you go, and then Mona shares a number, you go, and then Ahmad shares, and we, we start again. Um, I'm, I'm 15 years old, and we have 60,000 products. 15 years old? Uh, we're on track to reach $100 million in sale this year. $100 million. And we are 25% over target. Any number? Any number? Um, we're close to now 6 million members, and our repeat rate is 70%. Um. I started the company when I was 25, so I think there's huge potential for anyone that's going out to start a company. Go for it. Um, I built two businesses, online businesses, in the past 10 years, and our loyalty rate on Mom's World is 72%. Um, this is becoming a little bit uh, not challenging. We did six million dollars in revenue last month. No revenue. No revenue. Uh, first year growth was 30% month on month. Hey, come on, come on. We've had two cancellations returned from consumers in the past eight months. That's it. Um, on average, 
after one year, the customer at Marca VIP buys nine times. Nine, yeah. So Cabone is the only local player left, and I'm proud to say we're the largest daily deal player comparing against two international players. Yes, sir. Okay, I just have one question. Um, so I heard this actually you shouldn't be scared to be diluted when you want to grow. Can I know what's the remaining percentage of the first founders uh, in the companies currently? Can, can you know the what? I'm sorry? The remaining uh, per share uh, holding stake that uh, each of you has founders. Our stakes in the company? Yes, after many rounds of dilution. Are you going to invest? No. Just as you said, you're not, you shouldn't be scared in uh, accepting uh, big funding and therefore uh, get that into okay. the, great, to know. Uh, the great thing about Marca answer. VIP is that it's a founder-led, owner-driven company. Uh, and, and this is definitely uh, uh, one of the keys to success as well. You see a lot of companies trying to clone uh, you know, different models that are working in, in Europe or working in the United States, and, and they have this kind of machine uh, pumping out companies like Rocket Internet and some other ones in the region. That doesn't work. That never works. If the founder himself is not driving the company, driving the decisions in the company, uh, and, and backing the company, then it really doesn't work. So the management team at Marca VIP has well over 30% of the business. I think it's key to find an investor that understands the entrepreneur's motivation. Um, I don't think anyone's going to answer your question, but uh, in order to ensure that entrepreneur is motivated is critical. So, In our recent uh, round of funding, we got um, quite a few term sheets. And um, the majority of the term sheets understand the absolute necessity to give the founders and the owners and the managing partners a majority stake to keep them motivated and, and um, driving the business. Uh, my question is, if uh, Aramex charges 40 uh, JDs just for sending a piece of paper to Saudi Arabia, how do you m envision making money out of uh, the shipping and uh, what's the cost that you would uh, add to your, the cost of the merchandise you are, you are selling? Fadi Gandur is in the audience and I think he can help you with that question. Sorry, the question was... How, how, do, you, how do you reduce shipping costs, I guess, right? How do you reduce paper. how you reduce shipping and logistics costs? Yeah, but I mean, it's too much. I mean, Aramex charges a lot of money just to send anything to neighboring countries. I, so I, I actually it's maybe JDs for sending uh -huh. a single piece of paper. Well, I, I will tell you guys a, 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 another number. Okay, since we started working with Aramex, they have reduced their rates for us uh, more than sixty percent, sixty seventy percent of the initial rate that they gave us. But hold on, that's not, that's not because we're good looking or because we're smart. It's because we gave them a lot of business. So as I mentioned, when you grow fast, when you go big, you can start dictating the relationship. Iyad will be in your office once a week. Do all of you use Aramex? Cabone does not use Aramex. You have your own, logis you have your own solution. No, we use... Uh I mean, our business isn't wholly in products. Uh, it's paper-based. So we use localized distributors, and we hedge them against each other to see which one converts better, actually. So it's also a price-sensitive model, because the customer is actually paying for the delivery on Cabone. So we want to guarantee good quality of delivery, but also a cheaper delivery rate. My question to the panel about Paul's advice. Is it really too late? Is the MENA market saturated? What was about the question? Sorry. Is the MENA market saturated? Yeah, for the, for the new entrepreneurs. For the daily deal site, is the market is it for saturated? daily deals or for entrepreneurs? What was the for e-commerce entrepreneurs? Is it too late? Was that your comment or not? For e-commerce in general, no. For e-commerce in general, it's not even close to being saturated. Uh, I think there's so much opportunity in many, among many verticals of e-commerce to be exploited yet. So quite excited about the next three to five years within this market. All right. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you.